Look at that man, Tia. He looks so scary. I wouldn't want to be around him. That is not a nice thing to say, Tofu. Just because he scares you doesn't mean he is not kind and caring. Let me tell you a story of the beauty and the beast. The Beauty and the Beast Belle lived in a village with her father Morris who was an inventor. One morning, as she was returning from the market, a hunter named Gaston stopped her. Gaston was an arrogant young man. Everybody in the village knew he always got what he wanted. But no one ever dared stand up against him because his father was the village head. The only person who paid no attention to Gaston was Belle. But Gaston was obsessed with her and wanted to marry her. Belle, let me walk you home. Oh Gaston, N no, thank you. I can go home myself. I insist. I have to talk to your father about something important too. Belle continued walking, ignoring Gaston, who started walking with her. Once home, Belle quickly went inside. Morris, Morris, come out. I have to talk to you. What is it? It is your lucky day. I am going to marry Belle. You have lost your mind. Go away, Gaston. Belle is never going to marry you. Just then, there was a loud explosion in Morris's lab. And he took off towards it. Belle also ran towards her father's lab. Seeing that there was no one he could push around, Gaston left. Right? I have done it, Belle. My experiment was successful. I am leaving for the fair in the nearby village immediately. You will see, my child. People are going to love this. And so Morris leapt on his horse Philip and rode off. But as he was crossing the forest, he got lost. After a few hours, Philip and he landed in front of a huge lonely castle. There was no one in sight, so Morris tied Philip to a pole at the entrance and went inside the castle. It was pitch dark inside. A few candles were lit in the corners. Hello, is anyone here? I am lost. C can you help me? A large shadow came across the wall. As it came into light, Morris saw that it was not a man, but a huge, angry beast with an ugly scar across his face. How dare you enter my castle? You need help? 
I will help you. I'm sorry. I, I will leave immediately. And Morris started running back the way he had come. But the beast caught him and started dragging him. He took him down the staircase and locked him in the dungeon. Please, please let me go. Please let me go. You will stay here forever. This dungeon is your world now. A whole day had passed and Morris hadn't returned. Belle got worried and decided to go to the nearby village to look for her father. But she too got lost in the forest and landed up at the same castle. Philip was still there, tied to the pole. Belle decided to go inside, just in case her father was there. Hello? Papa? Anybody here? How dare you enter my castle? Get out right away before I lock you in the dungeon too. Suddenly, the beast moved out of the shadows and stood in front of Belle. She was terrified of him but dared not run. Somewhere from far away she could hear another voice. It was her father. Please, please let me go. Let me go, please. Open this door. Let me go, please. Do you have my father? Can you please let him go? Hey, what are you saying? I will stay instead of him. Please let him go. Hearing this, the beast took Belle's hand and dragged her up the stairs. He led her into a huge room. So be it. Your father is free and you shall be my prisoner forever. And so it was. No matter how much Morris protested, the beast threw Morris out of the castle and into the forest with Philip. When dinner time came, Belle did not join the beast for dinner. Instead, she stayed in her room crying. The beast entered her room and said, If you are going to stay in this castle, you have to follow its rules. You are expected at dinner. Don't you dare miss it next time. You are a monster. You didn't even let me see my father one last time. Go away. I hate you. Seeing Belle heartbroken, the beast felt bad. He pulled out a hand mirror from his coat and gave it to her. In the mirror, she would be able to see whomever she wanted to see at that moment. Belle looked into the mirror and saw her father finally leaving from the castle and riding into the forest. But to her horror, she saw he and Philip had suddenly been attacked by a pack of wolves. She gave out a loud cry and ran downstairs out of the castle gates and towards her father. Soon. She found herself and her father, Morris, surrounded by ferocious wolves. 
just as the wolves were about to attack Belle, a large paw grabbed one of them by the neck and threw it away. The wolves now turned on the beast who had decided to follow Belle and help her save her father. The beast scared them off but not before they had bit into his arm and injured Morris too. He put Morris on Philip who took off riding as soon as his master was secure. The beast tried to walk towards the castle but fainted and fell. He woke up two days later to find Belle sitting by his bedside in his room. The wounds on the arm had been bandaged. You... you didn't go? You are awake. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for saving our lives. Over the next few days, Belle nursed the beast back to health. As they spent time together, Belle realized that he wasn't as mean as he appeared to be the first day they had met. In turn, the beast learned to change his ways and became gentler and kinder. Soon they became very good friends. One day, Belle asked the beast if she could see her father in the mirror. The beast agreed and gave her the mirror. In the mirror, Belle saw all the villagers storming her house. They thought that Morris had gone mad and wanted to send him to the doctor. Nobody believed him when he kept insisting that Belle had been kept as a prisoner by a beast. Worried about her father, Belle requested if she could go to the village for a day just to save her father. And though the beast knew that she might never return, he agreed. Go, but take this mirror with you. In case you ever want to see me. Once Belle reached her house, she stood between her father and the villagers and tried to explain the truth. But the angry mob led by Gaston who wanted revenge from Morris and Belle for turning his wedding proposal down wouldn't listen. Gaston grabbed Belle's hand and tried to get her out of the way. As she struggled to free herself, the beast's mirror fell out of her pocket. In it was the beast looking right at them all. Goodness! She's shown the beast the way to the village. We must go and kill him before he comes here. The angry mob started marching towards the castle with fire torches and swords. They left behind Morris and Belle locked up in their house. Soon they stormed the castle gates. Gaston went upstairs and challenged the beast to a fight. But the beast had had a change of heart. He did not wish to fight. So he came out of the balcony unarmed and tried to talk to the villagers.
but Gaston wouldn't have it. He wanted to kill the beast and so he attacked him. His sword pierced through the beast's stomach. Shocked, the beast swung his arm to protect himself. Scared, Gaston stepped backwards and fell off the balcony and died. Somehow, Belle had escaped from her house. and reached the balcony just as the beast fell on the floor. Uh, I, I love you, Belle. I love you too. Please don't go. Suddenly, the castle lit up with thousands of candles as Belle still lay crying by the beast. He turned into a handsome young prince. Belle! It's me. You freed me from the witch's spell. To break the spell, I had to love and win the love of another. You loved me even through I was a beast. You saved me, Belle. You saved me. It really is you? As they hugged each other, they saw the rest of the castle and the forest bloom with beautiful trees and flowers. So you see, Tofu, you should never judge people by the way they look. I'm sorry, Tia. I will always remember this now. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some ducks, with a quack quack here and a quack quack there Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some pigs E-I-E-I-O With an oink oink here and an oink oink there here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink, oink Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some cows E-I-E-I-O With a moo moo here and a moo moo there Here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo moo Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some dogs E-I-E-I-O With a woof woof here and a woof woof there Here a woof, there a woof, everywhere a woof woof Old MacDonald had a farm Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some cats E-I-E-I-O With a mew mew here and a mew mew there Here a mew, there a mew, everywhere a mew mew Old MacDonald had a farm Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some horses E-I-E-I-O With a nay nay here and a nay nay there Here a nay, there a nay, everywhere a nay nay Old MacDonald had a farm For your favorite rhymes, stories, and more, join Kids Heart Family. Subscribe here.